so in this video we're going to look at determining how many atoms are in a molecule and some of the aspects that go into us determining that. So we're going to look at an example molecule and how we address that example molecule to find out the number of atoms that we have there. So we're going to look at this molecule here. And what we want to do is we want to figure out well how many atoms of each atom do we have? And there's a couple things we need to take into consideration. We need to take into consideration first our subscripts here. And looking at those subscripts and what does that mean? So a subscript says be, uh, whatever it's attached to tells us that's how many we have. So with dealing with our hydrogen here, a subscript of three says there's three hydrogens. Now if we have a subscript next to a parentheses, that means we have three in this case of everything inside of that parentheses. So we're going to look at the number of carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and then oxygen atoms in this molecule. So we can look at carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen here. We're going to count how many of each we have. We're going to see this is going to get real important when we get into balancing reactions. Now here we see we have one carbon atom here. So I'm going to put one, but it's inside this parentheses. So I'm going to say, well, times three, because we have three of this CH3 portion of our molecule. And then we also see that we have one carbon atom outside here. So I'm going to add that one there. And so we see we end up with a total of four carbon atoms there. We can go to our hydrogen. Inside of our parentheses, we have three hydrogen atoms. Well, then we have three of what's uh, inside that parentheses. So it'll be a total of three. And then we got one more outside of it, again, in our molecule. And it, we note that if there is no subscript there, that means there is one of that molecule. And so that means we have 10 hydrogen atoms. And then we, for oxygen, we just have this one oxygen atom here. And we see then well, we have one oxygen atom. So that gave us the ability to kind of address and figure out how many atoms we have in this specific molecule. So now let's go ahead and look at a different molecule, maybe a little bit more complex. So now we have this other molecule here. This is called a hydrate. Now a hydrate means we have these, this dot here saying we have these water molecules attached to this ionic compound. Now in this ionic compound we see we have a few different atoms as we're trying to identify. We've got iron, we have nitrogen, we have oxygen, and we have hydrogen. So we want to count how many of each of those that we have. Well, with iron, there's no subscript number written here, which means we only have one, and it's not encrised anywhere else in our molecule. We go to nitrogen. Well, we have our one nitrogen uh, atom inside of this parentheses of three. So we multiply that by three, because we have three of these NO3 ions, and that would give us a total of three nitrogen atoms here. We then go to oxygen. We have three oxygen atoms inside of our parentheses, and then we have three of what's inside that. So we multiply that by three again. And then we're going to add to that. This multiplier in front, front tells us we have five of whatever follows. So we have five, and there's one oxygen molecule or atom there. And so we would have a total of 14 oxygen atoms. Finally, we can go to hydrogen. We see hydrogen's only comprised in our water molecule here in our hydrate. So we have five water molecules. Each water molecule has two hydrogens. And so that tells us that we have 10 hydrogens in our molecule. So now we see we can look at an individual molecule and be able to find out how many of each type of atom we have in that molecule. In the next video, we're going to look at addressing, well, what if we have a reaction that is comprised of a bunch of molecules? How can we then balance that uh, reaction that we have?